So there are Anthony Loke, uh, Secretary General, DAP. That's really Lim Kit Siang. That's Sri Utama, Good Meet Ko, Mum. Esteemed guests, that's Sri Tommy Thomas. That's Sri Shamudin Yunus. That's Sri Malikim Tias. Yang berhormat, yang berhormat, uh, we're present here tonight. We'll be Ram Kapal, Man Kapal, my sister Sangeet, my wife Sangeeta, and uh, friends who are here with us tonight. First and foremost, uh, let me, on behalf of my family, record our sincere appreciation and thanks to all of you for making time to attend this very important event tonight. It has been 10 years, and I think all of us still remember almost as if it happened just yesterday. News that sprang out into the night of the 17th of April, 2014. There was an accident and, of course, we heard news of the passing of Mr. Karpa. I remember that night very clearly. I was in hospital and Mr. Kapal had come to visit me. I was in Pantai Hospital. He was supposed to come at about five o'clock. So I remember the specialists and the nurses and some of my friends waited in the hospital room. Um, but uh, he was delayed. He was finishing up some work in the office and uh, we thought that he wouldn't come to the hospital. But at about 8 o'clock, uh, he arrived. Michael, uh, his caretaker, rang up and told me that he had arrived and that he was coming up. And so he came up. And uh, I had this conversation with him and uh, we laughed a lot. I was in severe pain, so I was being treated. And uh, he was discussing the medication that they were giving me. And, uh, you know, Mr. Kapal has a very humorous side to him. So we laughed a lot. And at about 10.30 he left. And I still remember very clearly, until now even, uh, that moment that he actually left the room. My mom followed him. He went back. And subsequently, uh, my wife left the hospital. And she came back at about one o'clock in the morning uh, with news that something had happened. And of course, uh, I made some phone calls to confirm uh, what it is I was told, and it was true. Uh, then of course news broke out, and uh, we witnessed something uh, extraordinary, this huge outpouring of grief, uh, shock at the news. And um, I think all the way from Kampa, back to Penang, we saw how people came together to help us, to express their sorrow, to also share with us our grief, and give us that comfort that uh, at the end of the day, uh, here was a man that was not just admired by the whole country, but also loved by all. How does that happen? One would think that Living a life like Mr. Kapal did, spending all your time dedicated to certain things, you would perhaps only reach out to a certain segment of society. As a lawyer, you defend people, of course, you make friends. As a politician, you also make many friends, and of course, as an individual, a father, husband, and a brother to his family, 
relatives, you would reach out to a certain segment of society. But Mr. Kapal was different. In his years of practice as a lawyer, he taught us many things. If you hear stories about him in university, Uncle Sababati is in the crowd today. Uncle Sabah, are you here? Well, he was here earlier. His university mates will tell you some fierce stories about how it is they were in university. It took him more than the usual time to graduate. That's probably why he was such a good lawyer, because he spent a bit more time in university than <laughs> all of us. I'm just, just kidding, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, coming back to Penang, starting afresh, and building himself up in an environment wherein we, of course, embarked on a journey to build a Malaysia that all of us could be proud of. The perseverance facing the challenges that he did, making a decision to take on cases that were not just difficult in nature, but cases that had a tendency to break one's spirit down. You represent someone and you know that you're right. Nevertheless, you lose the case. And you know that that wasn't right. But you have to soldier on. And that is what he taught all of us. He taught us to soldier on. If you believe in something and you have the means to achieve it, keep fighting. Soldier on. And he did that. And the passion that he had in him to make sure that justice prevailed led him subsequently to the political journey that he subsequently embarked on. It wasn't easy. We have today with us Tan Sri Lim Kitsiang. Guaneng was here a while ago and he's left. They talk to you about detentions in Kamunting, 1987. In addition to that, numerous charges in court brought against Mr. Kapal. That didn't break their spirit. In fact, I think uh, if you look at how things unfolded, that made them even stronger. After being released in 1989, he bounced back and he pursued what he believed in. Mr. Lim Kitsiang is perhaps the closest uh, friend, political friend, who followed him through that journey. I'm very happy to have you here uh, today, Tansri. Uh, indeed, an honor. A person who can personally speak to events that occurred over the many years that Mr. Kapal built his life both in the legal profession and politically. Subsequent to that, of course, as all of you know, there was an accident and it was difficult. But nevertheless, he soldiered on. He carried on despite the fact that it was difficult. I remember going to the office and seeing him, even in his tired state, 11 o'clock at night, sitting there, looking at books, looking for answers, trying to find a solution to a case, trying to save someone. Even after the accident, he still carried on. He stood for elections. He went back to parliament. I think he demonstrated to us that if you really, really are so you really, really put your mind to something, then, of course, if you persevere, you will be able to achieve it. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is important for us to remember what it is Mr. Kapal did during his life, during his lifetime. I, I can't repeat, um, and I won't repeat what has been said by Tan Sri Tommy, Dr. Sri Hishamuddin, uh, Dr. Impias, Dr. Malik. Thank you for the kind words. Most of the stories were true. Some were restrained. I know Imtiaz is going to say a lot more, but uh, 
He was very restrained. He's good. Many occasions I know that my late father appeared before Justice Ishamuddin. And he had very high regards for you, uh, Judge. Likewise, uh, Darcy Thomas, close friends. You know, Mr. Kapal had many stories to tell me about you as well, but I'm not going to repeat the stories here. <laughs> Throughout all this, I think we must recognize the sacrifices of my mother. It was not easy for my late father, but I think it was my mum who really gave him the strength to carry on. And I think we should today recognize that again. Justice Ishamuddin said earlier that Mr. Kapal was a lawyer that went straight to the point. He also said that that was also the case when he came to cross-examination. I, I can tell you this. The many lawyers in my family, all except one, but the best cross-examiner in my family is my mother. My father told me that. <laughs> when she asks you something, just answer. And she won't ask you more than once. So that's the kind of humor my late father used to share with us um, uh, in our growing years. Now, you've heard a lot about Mr. Kapal, the politician, the lawyer. Uh, but I will also say this, Mr. Kapal was a great father. We, of course, when we were younger, we used to read uh, about him more in the press than we saw him at times. Uh, you know, he was, he was always busy at work. But he made it, he made it a point uh, to en ensure that he spent time with us. And of course, subsequently, he inspired us by what he did. Uh, and I think all of us then decided uh, that we will also take up law. And when we took up law, we spent a lot of time with him as lawyers, learned a lot from him. And I have the privilege of uh, appearing in court many times with him. Uh, many funny stories I can tell you. Uh, about us in court, um, I'll just, I, I'm going to limit this, uh, Intias is looking at me with the, with the eyebrow, eyebrow raised up, right? Um, I remember there was one day we went to court uh, <clears throat> and I was um, carrying Mr. Kapal's bag. Uh, there was an appeal in the, in the federal court and we walked into a court and it was packed. Of course, we were late. Uh, I think Justice Sishamuddin can, can confirm this. We, we are quite often not on time. <laughs> um, we call into court and ask for the case to be stood down. But in the federal court, of course, they carry on with other cases first. So we walked into court, and I was walking behind Mr. Kapal. We prepared for the case the whole of the night before, and we were really well prepared. We were going to win this case. So we walked into court, and as Mr. Kapal was walking in, uh, Justice Lamin Yunus, who was chairing the panel, uh, said in a loud voice, Yes, Kapal, uh, this case that you did two days ago um, on this particular point, can you tell us more about it? And Mr. Kapal, while he was walking in, he says, ah, You know, this is what happened, and the point is resolved, and the matter, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, the appeal was allowed. So the judge looks at um, Mr. Kapal and says, Thank you, Mr. Kapal, and then he says to the DPP, You know, he says, well, there you have it. This is an issue that's come before us in the last couple of days. We have dealt with it, you know, so that's how it is. So they, they resolved the case and Mr. Kapal looked at me and he said, okay, then let's go, you know, uh, we are done. So as we turned around, uh, the interpreter called up the next case and then looked at me and said, look, this is your case. <laughs> so I, I, I then went back and said, Mr. Kapal, that, that, this is our case now. Then he said, well, whose case was that earlier, right? <laughs> Then there was a senior lawyer at the, at the bar sitting on that side. I'm not going to mention his name. He stood up and he goes, thank you, Karpal. <laughs> so, you know, we, we've been through... Uh, 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 <laughs> we've, uh, Mr. Karpal had a different side to him. You know, if you knew him well enough, you would remember the laughter. You remember the friendship. 
and you would definitely miss him dearly. So to all of you who are here uh, tonight, I'm not going to go into details. The cases have been mentioned, the citations have been given. Um, they are all there. My family and I would like to thank you for all making time to be with us tonight in memory of my late father. He was a gem of a man and we miss him dearly. And I think at the end of the day, the fact that so many people have turned up today to share with us the experiences that they, all of you have had with him, it speaks volumes of how it is all of us miss him. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for making time, attending this function tonight. And I like to also take this opportunity to thank uh, the organizing committee uh, for actually doing a splendid job tonight. I think uh, the event was very well handled. Thank you very much, and I wish you all very well. Thank you very much.